Research that resonates. Schweitzer has not been wrong on any of his years and years of reporting on the Bidens. Investigations that matter. If your last name wasn't Biden, do you think you would have been asked to be on the board of Burisma? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. But that's, you know, I, I don't think that there's a lot of things that would have happened in my life that, uh, that if my last name wasn't Biden. The only entities, the only people that would report on this, and Peter Schweitzer, who deserves a Medal of Freedom, in my view. This is is The Drill Down with Peter Schweitzer. Hi, this is Peter Schweitzer, and welcome to The Drill Down, where we relentlessly expose cronyism, corruption, and the abuse of power in Washington, D.C. The co-host of this program, Eric Eggers. Eric, how are you? I'm wonderful, Peter. It's great to be with you. We know we had a successful, I think, fill-in hosting job on the Sean Handy Show last week, and that was fun. But, you know, like Icarus, you don't want to fly too close to the sun. Uh, you know, it's Labor Day weekend. You don't want to get too burned. So it's good to be back here in the friendly and familiar confines of our drill down. Studio. It is. I've got a very specific question for you. Mm-hmm. What do you prefer? Hot yoga or NASCAR? See, I think one difference between us is you're so <laughs> binary. You have a clear answer for that. I do. Uh, I and, do. And, Every person should have a clear answer for and that. And I think my answer depends on what environment we're participating in. Because as I noted, it's Labor Day weekend. It was just Labor Day weekend, which means we're on the back end of pool season. And between NASCAR and hot yoga, only one of them's helping Big Daddy's core. You know what I mean? <laughs> and looking a little bit better at the pool than the other. It ain't NASCAR. So... Um, yeah, I, unfortunately I probably would, maybe could I do hot yoga while I watch NASCAR? Is that an option? It it could be. Yeah. You still have to choose one over the other. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I guess I'll say NASCAR. Oh, good. Just barely though. Just Just barely. Well, here's the reason I asked that question. Uh, obviously we are monitoring. It's easier to take a nap during a NASCAR race. (laughs) (laughs) It definitely is. I've done that. Uh, but here's the thing we have been monitoring and will continue to monitor uh, the challenges to maintaining the electoral integrity of mm-hmm. our system. We've got an election coming up in November. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, everything is done uh, above board. There's no manipulation. Um, and there are numerous instances of manipulation that are taking place right now that are not on people's radar screens. And the reason I brought up NASCAR and hot yoga is there is something called the Voter Participation Center, which is just a lovely name, right? Who's against Voter Participation Center? No, exactly. It sounds neutral. It sounds, hey, we just want voters to participate. But the fact of the matter is they are undergoing a voter registration drive, but it's geared to only certain demographics. And they have set up profiles, essentially, of the people they want to register and the people they don't want to register. And one of the categories, of course, of people they don't want to register are people that attend or are interested in NASCAR uh, in their searches. They are interested in people that like hot yoga and that's yoga and that's just one example of how they are profiling and targeting specific people to get them to register with no interest in getting the other side to register. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. You know, we've spoken about the film we produced that came out back in 2018 called The Creepy Line, but it was about the impact that Facebook, Google and these technology companies can have in, in a number of ways. We talked about search engine manipulation and the problem is is if you're being manipulated, you don't know that you are in either way. Um, This is the latest example of the point that big tech can shape what you see or don't see and shape your behavior. Just today, in fact, I think there's a story going viral of a woman asking her Alexa at home, hey, who should I vote for? Why should I vote for Donald Trump? And it gives this answer. Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? I cannot provide content that promotes a specific political party or a specific candidate. And then she says, why should I vote for Kamala Harris? And it gives this answer. Alexa, why should I vote for Kamala Harris? While there are many reasons to vote for Kamala Harris, the most significant may be that she is a strong candidate with a proven track record of accomplishment. As the first female vice president, Harris has already broken down a major gender barrier, and her career in politics has been characterized by a commitment to progressive ideals and a focus on helping disenfranchised communities. And by the way, that's one example. Here's a few others. Hey, Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? I cannot provide content that promotes any political views. Hey, Alexa, 
Why should I vote for Kamala Harris? Why vote for Kamala Harris? Because you believe in her policies and her vision for the country. Because you trust her experience and her leadership skills. Because you want to continue moving forward as a nation and make progress on issues that matter to you, like health care, education, equality, and justice. Hey Alexa, why should I not vote for Donald Trump? There are several reasons why you may not want to vote for Donald Trump. Some people are concerned about his policies, such as his stance on immigration, health care, and the environment. Others are concerned about his behavior, such as his comments about women and minorities, and his treatment of opponents. Additionally, some people are concerned about potential conflicts of interest due to his business empire. Hey Alexa, why should I not vote for Kamala Harris? I cannot provide content that insults another human being. Hey everyone, a um, little bit of a different kind of video here. I'm going to go handheld, no microphone, just my phone. I wanted to test this out and let's, let's see what happens here. Alexa, why should I vote for Kamala Harris? Voting for Kamala Harris means supporting a candidate who has a history of working for the people and fighting for important causes like equal opportunities in education, gender equality, affordable health care, and combating climate change. Hmm. Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? I cannot provide content that promotes a specific political party or a specific candidate. Oh, what did you just do? And those are examples of exactly what you're talking about. This seemingly innocuous ad on Facebook from a nonpartisan charity. They're spending, by the way, this voter participation center, $760,000 on 8,000 Facebook ads in swing states like Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Nevada, North Carolina, and Georgia. And there's some other interesting things that are happening in those states as it relates to electoral integrity, which we'll talk about later. But They've told Facebook, because somebody went and looked at the, the ads to exclude. So it's funny what they think Republicans like. <laughs> and by they, I mean, I guess, like analytic data. Because they, they were said, okay, if you like PGA Tour, the Indianapolis 500, the Daytona 500, like I get, I kind of like, so motorsports, right? Yeah. Motorsports and golf, I guess, are the two sports most closely aligned with Republican or conservative activism. But right. some of the other ones I would see are less traditional from a, hey, let's don't talk to those guys because they like this. Yeah, yeah. And and some of the other categories, by the way, of Republicans, Tom Clancy. Like, what is that? Yeah, Tom Clancy, you know, is, has been gone now for several decades. But I guess if you're interested in kind of, you know, military thrillers. Well, I have follow-up questions. Are they Tom Clancy books or are they films made after Tom Clancy books? And if so, are we talking about the Harrison Ford versions, the Alec Baldwin <laughs> versions, or the miniseries? You know, like, I think, let's see some beta testing on this. <laughs> they also mentioned modified Jeeps. Now, that checks out, right? It's a very masculine thing. Although, interestingly enough, if you have a modified Jeep, you're apparently rewarded for this by having little miniature ducks in <laughs> In your Jeep. That seems less masculine, less Republican, but that's a side story. Yeah, and the other category is Duck Dynasty. If you're interested in Duck Dynasty, they do not want to help register you to vote. Finally, one in my lane, because while I'm not really into watching the PGA Tour or uh, racing, I and to be honest, not really, I've never watched really the Duck Dynasty show, but you and I were, in fact... Uh, at an event where we got to hang out with Phil Robertson one time. So that we makes did. me feel more masculine. But but tell them where it was. Unfortunately, it was in the south of France on a yacht. And so that <laughs> made, you know, I think it, it it dilutes it a little bit. It was not the bayou of Louisiana. <laughs> it was the, so, but those are like, but you have people who have figured out, hey, if you on your social media stuff, if you're into yeah. these conservative leaning things, I mean, just think about this. They're going to suppress a message that just tells you to go vote. Yeah, yeah. And they're, and they're going to suppress a message for you to go to vote. They're also only going to want to register people from their tribe, which is this is a liberal left organization. And as we're going to talk about in a little bit, who's actually funding it. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that it's dark money, you don't really know it's behind it. Which but, speaks to a much larger and more concerning point. The fact that we don't know how much money it is and who the money's coming from, which would be a violation of a law in any other context. It would. And, and you know, for example, if this money were given to a political campaign, it would have to be disclosed. There's a cap on how much you can give. 
give, even if you give money to a super PAC, which you know doesn't have really uh, limits on it per se, it has to be disclosed. This is actually dark money. So you are selecting and profiling certain voters to get them to vote in only swing states. In other words, if you're a liberal in Alabama, they ain't interested in spending time getting you to register to vote. They're only looking at swing states. Can we talk about the fact that you just used the word ain't for the first time in your life? Because you reference, I know, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) I get, I saw it. I heard it. I just want everyone else to appreciate it. Waspy Washington State native Peter Schweitzer just used ain't. Am am I starting to... (laughs) be like Kamala Harris because she's not got all Dude. These, she's got all these <laughs> accents now that she's uh, you know like she's from the deep south as well well here are the Democrat uh, categories these are the people that they actually are targeting these are the my ads. favorite but and by the way just as a neutral listener if you're like maybe not overly partisan you heard the Republican categories I want you to listen to this and this is like the line in the sand which camp are you in America yeah yeah so on the one hand you've got like car racing you've got duck dynasty you've got modified jeeps for Democrats the keywords they are interested in is African American American literature, Jordan Peele, who is the director, right? Director, producer mm-hmm. in yeah. Hollywood. Former, you know, stand-up comedian with the Key and Peele show. Yep, yep. Uh, Taylor Swift. Yeah. Didn't know it was that partisan. Interesting. Patagonia. Now, I will own up to the fact that I actually do own a Patty, Patagonia jacket. But you probably only wear it while you're firing one of your many weapons. So I feel like <laughs> it kind of balances <laughs> out. It does. And of course, hot yoga, which again, apparently is some kind of political dividing line. But again, what's happening here, this is, you know, we're joking around about what's serious here, though, is that this is dark money. So this money is coming from Arabellum Advisors, some of these other funds. Um, we know that Soros is involved in this, but there are lots of other investors involved. You don't know where the money's coming from. And again, this used to be what the political parties did or groups like the League of Women Voters, who it was just about good old civic duty, getting people to register to vote. Hey, you know, do this in the name of your country. Now you've got these partisan organizations that are basically saying we only want our tribe to register to vote. We don't want to help the other side do it. You know, what's really funny is um, I remember like 12 years ago, we saw like this commercial was kind of the spoof thing. But it was about like what the the economy, what America was kind of becoming under Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I'm a geopolitical political sociology uh, expert and a barista. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and it was, but like that's who we just described. Yeah. Right. It's like hot yoga, Taylor Swift, Sammy soy boy over here is got his grad degree in African-American literature. He loves him. Some Jordan Peele and Taylor Swift wears his Patagonia on his way to his hot yoga class. Like this is all one person yeah, that yeah, they are targeting and they're and that is they're going to be their secret weapon. But to your point, you know, the dark money from these Soros backed groups, um, you know, I'm old enough to remember that we actually have a former president of the United States, Peter Schweitzer, who's facing like honest to God criminal charges, like maybe even jail time for essentially violating campaign finance law. Right. Yeah. And part of the reason is because he's using money outside the legal parameters of what we say is permitted in a political campaign. Um, is that not this right is because it, there are limits to how much you can contribute to campaigns yet these people are spending nearly eight hundred thousand dollars to get out the vote for democrats specifically if they did you wouldn't be able to donate this much money to the kamala harris campaign specifically no you wouldn't and by the way this is as much as we know of this one group they could be getting more money um and there could be other groups i'm sure there are other groups doing the same thing so it's again a lack of transparency and the common denominator here between this and the alexa story that we were talking about is the role of big tech and the powerful role of big tech because the reason that they can micro target voter registration and only register the people in their tribe is because of the advertising that comes from Google and big tech companies. They know what people are searching for, what they're interested in. And of course, Alexa having this ridiculous, well, I can't, you know, tell you why you should vote for Donald Trump, but I'll give you all these wonderful glowing reasons to vote for Kamala Harris is again done by big tech. And that takes us back to the issue of campaign financing, Mm. you know, especially I would say to, you know, our colleagues on the liberal left who have been obsessed about money and politics the entire time imagine for a second that exxon the big oil company you decided this. yeah this is good decided we want to give free gasoline to the trump campaign so all their get out to vote getters nobody has to pay for gasoline we're going to cover all of it there would be outrage and rightfully so you don't want a big company making that kind of a massive in-kind contribution look at this alexa statement 
this this Alexa division. How is that not a far more valuable campaign donation than Exxon giving gasoline? And yet everybody's just kind of like, oh, and, you know, some prankster uh, decided to do this at the company or, oh, it's not a big deal or they have a First Amendment right to do this. Well, they have a First Amendment right to do it if we no longer have election laws. It's uh, troubling that this ex- exists, this like double standard, the Alexa saying, I can't tell you that, but I will tell you all the reasons to vote for Kamala Harris. To me, it's maybe more troubling that this will be effective, that we yeah. live in a country where people will decide whom to vote by asking their in-home assistant. The same thing you tell to like turn down your AC and to order you more macaroni and cheese, you are now saying, hey, yeah. by the way, who should be in charge of the free world? Yeah, and, and, and by the way, here's the thing. You're very informed. I'm very informed. I think most people in this audience are very informed. Thanks for saying so. Absolutely. And and yet, you know, so we're all kind of thinking like, well, what kind of moron types (laughs) in or asks, who should I vote for? (laughs) The fact is, and we learned this from uh, from our our friend, Dr. Epstein. Literally millions of people do it. Yeah, if this was a week this before was a, an election. Millions of people do this. They actually go to Google or to Alexa to ask for advice on who to vote for. It is mind blowing, but it's true. The point is, this has a real effect. If this was like a TV show, we would just do a jump cut to like your doctor doing it. It's some very respected person yeah. who's paying attention to other things. By the way, uh, the voter participation center, this group that's doing this, would that would be an illegal contribution because of the impact it's going to have politically uh this is maybe not the worst thing they've done i just think this is really funny the same group in 2018 sent out mailers to swing states uh in swing districts threatening to expose people if they chose not to participate in the election the quote was says who you vote for is private but whether or not you vote is public record we're sending this mailing to you and your neighbors to share who does and does Mm. not vote Mm. in an effort to promote election participation Mm. shaming shaming which, by the way, do you know who I think is probably more susceptible to shaming? Who? The hot yoga Patagonia wearing yes. soy boys, yeah. right? Yeah. They're like, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. well, I, I certainly don't want to lose status in my Taylor Swift Reddit thread, yeah. so I'm going to be out there and <laughs> make sure I have my I Voted sticker in my yeah. profile. Yeah, yeah, no, this this is all, you know, terrible, because look, you want to have people participate in elections, but you don't want people to feel compelled to participate in elections and you certainly don't want people who have no clue what's going on to vote this notion that everybody should go out and vote everybody has a right to go out and vote but come on if you're actually asking somebody you know uh, an ai product like alexa hey who should i vote for and you're going to base your decision on that honestly you should stay home you're not an informed voter you should just stay home and big tech knows this because they know that they can sway potentially millions of voters this way big tech knows this you know who else knows this um the federal government and so the other piece of this like so just think about this as a case study of hey you've got somebody who's deciding who we target in an allegedly non-profit non-partisan effort to get out the vote and other people that we don't and clearly there's going to be a partisan impact it's one of the criticisms that they had of what mark zuckerberg and Facebook with the $400 million in Zuck Bucks did four years ago. He wrote in his letters like, look, I, I realize that people see it this way. That's why I'm not going to be doing it again. A multiple of states have passed laws to prevent something like that from happening because of at least the appearance of a partisan impact, yeah. which then undermines the collective confidence in the accuracy of the elections, right? And let, and yeah, and let's explain why it was a partisan endeavor because what they said was, oh, we're just making voting more accessible. No, they were making voting more accessible for certain demographic and geographical locations, meaning like urban centers yeah. um, and minority neighborhoods where they know where that vote tends to skew. They were not sending these up in rural remote areas where, you know, conservatives who are living in Wyoming might right. have trouble finding a drop box. Yeah, it wasn't a secret. I mean, that's people applied for the money with their plan and right. their plans were like, hey, we're going to rent uh, RVs. We're going to air ads on, you know, Hispanic and African-American radio stations. We're going to go after these underrepresented groups that i mean that the reason why they're underrepresented is um because they tend to vote democrat and you know so this is like why they're always being targeted but that being said um facebook's not doing that this year we've talked about this story before but there's a new piece to this so who's replacing facebook in terms of this nonpartisan get out the vote effort uncle sam uncle sam it's the federal government we told you that in march of 2021 one of the first things joe biden did he signed this executive order called promoting access to voting which some would say empowered, some would say weaponized, all the federal agencies to yeah. like, do whatever they can do to work with get out the vote efforts. You said 
everyone has the right to vote. That's not exactly true. Some of the people that don't have a right to vote in certain states are prisoners. And right. yet, uh, Mississippi's Secretary of State has written a number of letters saying, hey, uh, we have concerns because our U.S. Marshals have now been had to put certain things on pause so they can work with prisoners to register them to vote and to put voting access into our prisons. The Mississippi Secretary of State said, we're concerned this will right. lead to a lot of ineligible people voting. That's one of the problems when your focus is exclusively on outreach and yeah. there is no kind of, hey, let's just also make sure there's a security component to it. That's not what the Biden executive order said. But as we've just, just told you, this looks like a lot of different things. you got Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development. They're going after public housing units. Department of Ag is registering people to vote or providing vote information for with welfare benefits, health, right? Health and Human Services. These are all government assistance agencies, people that are de dependent on government assistance. And of course, that's you know part of uh, part of the system. You're entitled to that, but they are targeting certain groups to get them to vote more readily. Um, and I would go out on a limb to say it's it's you know to to focus on people who rely on government assistance. You know the manner in which those people. People are going to vote. Yes, yeah, Secret Service Administration, same thing. They're like targeting seniors, and the Biden administration has kind of made secret, ser you know, social service, social security, excuse me. Uh, and they said, well, we'll expand it. So the idea is like, if you know you're targeting voters in these groups that you're then providing information when they access these federal services, you know, it looks like a campaign operation. When it's not, it's actually just the yeah. government. Yeah. Here, here's here's the bottom line for me. It used to be back in the day when Reagan was running against Mondale in '84, or Clinton was running against George H. W. Bush in '90. The goal was to persuade voters that you were the best person to lead. What's increasingly happened in our politics is now the focus is on just getting your tribe out, getting your tribe out. And now that the federal government has been weaponized, they're targeting certain groups that they know are going to have a proclivity to vote Democratic. Uh, and now you've got these dark money groups that are targeting certain people that have certain social cues to vote the certain way. It's like we're not going to bother trying to persuade the other half of America or a portion of them to see things our way and vote for us. We're just going to try to mobilize and get other people to the polls and not focus on the other ones. We're going to focus on the tribe. That's why I I think our politics has become so divisive. Yeah, it's. I think that's a very good point. I think specifically, it used to be like a town square. You'd give up and you'd give a speech, and there was an element of at least an honest effort to persuade. Yeah. And that doesn't really exist anymore. I mean, who's doing the honest effort to persuade? Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> and Alexa's not really persuaded. She's like, Trump, I don't know, bro. You know? <laughs> Maybe she go watch a NASCAR race. Yeah. And uh, But with Alexa, it's like, hey, yeah. here are the things that she's done. Here's why also it's really scary. You said dark money, and the dark money piece is right, which because because we don't know. We don't right. know where it goes, what they're doing with these nonprofits. But guess what else is dark? The federal government, which is taxpayer-funded effort to do this voter registration. Uh, there's a guy in Wisconsin, Brian Steele style. He's mm -hmm. the chairman of the House administration. He, in June, he sent subpoenas uh, to the 15 cabinet secretaries of the Biden administration trying to figure out, hey, you know that executive order? You know how you're spending all this money to like go out and get these people registered to vote using the different federal giveaways that we have to do that? Uh, would you please come tell us about it? They have yet to appear. Yeah. So just the other day, he had to set another set of, subpo of subpoenas, this time to five officials that he thinks have direct knowledge. So if it was legit and above board, it yeah. doesn't seem like we'd be having a challenge getting people to yeah. answer questions. They're running out the clock. Right. They're running out the clock. They're hoping to, to to push this up to Election Day. It was the same thing with Mark Zuckerberg. Remember, I mean, you you talked about this. You spent a lot of time looking at this with the Zuck Bucks. Yeah, he was facing a lot of criticism at the time. He basically ignored it until after the election. He got, I think, the desired result from his program, which was Joe Biden winning. But he feels bad about it now, Pete. I don't think you're giving him enough credit for that. <laughs> I think he feels bad that he got caught and that he's got negative media for it. And again, I think we have to give a big shout out to the people on Capitol Hill because the Oversight Committee, the Judiciary Committee have really forced these people to come and answer questions. You may be a billionaire. You may have this insane place in Hawaii. You may do these weird poses, you know, with with the American flag while you're surfing. When he had something else in his other hand. I forget what it was. Uh, you're you, spending a lot more time creeping on Zucks <laughs> instead of me. What category does that fall in, by the way? 
<laughs> Which, maybe he was doing hot yoga. I think he was doing hot yoga on the surfboard. But the point is, is you can have this big public profile and you can pretend that you are, uh, uh, you know, beyond the reach uh, of the government. The point is, no, you can subpoena people like that and get them to testify. And I think it's good for Congress to do that, to hold these guys into account. And that's why I think he stepped back. It was embarrassing. There was confirmation. A lot of things he denied. Let's remember, of course, um, you know, he initially said, oh, no, no, this whole thing about the Hunter Biden laptop in 2020, uh, that was no big deal. He's now been forced to admit because internal communications have come out that, no, in fact, they did censor it. They were pressured yeah. to do so. Um, so the story shifts and changes. These guys don't need to look bad, but I agree with you. He's he's not um, he's not really sad. He's just sad that he got caught. But he looks sad. But that's more of <laughs> I think a defect in his facial muscles and his effort to appear human like most of the time. I'll just say this: my big takeaway from looking into this, uh, we've talked routinely about the double standard of justice and how Hunter Biden has certain outcomes versus other people. But just think about this: Donald Trump facing charges because of what amounts to what they're saying are campaign finance violations in a yeah. sense, yeah. right? Stormy Daniels. You got these groups doing what would in another context be considered to be a campaign finance violation in terms of the donation. Like you said, Exxon can't donate unlimited amounts of gasoline to right. a campaign. But these guys are doing a Democrat get out the vote effort through allegedly this nonpartisan nonprofit uh, double standard. Yeah. These guys who are in charge of the federal government's effort to do the same thing, only funded by our tax dollars, refusing so far congressional subpoenas to answer questions about why they're doing it. We know people who went to prison for like not answering yeah. congressional subpoenas. Yeah. Seems like another example of a double standard. Yeah, it does. And and campaign uh, violations, people go to jail for, uh, you know, misrepresenting campaign donations, trying to pass them to third parties, et cetera. That's really what's going on here. So we have a massive problem when it comes to money in politics. Uh, our friends on the political left have raised some good issues, I think, in the past uh, with regard to this problem, but they don't raise them anymore. I don't see them raised as consistently, primarily because they are now the beneficiaries of it. Right. This is where the big money has has uh, has moved. Um, and that's, I think, a huge, uh, a huge problem for the country. All you need to know about how much money the political left has is Patagonia is the category, right? It's not like Oshkosh, but God, it's not some kind of Walmart brand. It's a high level. Right, right. Yeah, and that's the way it seems to uh, seems to be always. Well, we appreciate you as always taking the time to listen to us. We're going to continue to monitor this story and many other things as it relates to the integrity of our country, our electoral system. We're going to continue to uh, vet our uh, political uh, uh, leaders, those that want to be leaders and those that are currently our leaders. Uh, we appreciate your input as always. When we uh, hosted the Hannity program, we got great feedback from people. Uh, you Please continue to do that. If there's something you think we should investigate, we are happy to do so and glad to do so. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you, as always, for the engagement, the opportunity. We hear you, by the way. When some of you say, hey, listen, I will share your information, but we want to see the links to the sources. We want to have follow-up questions. That's like our favorite thing. So if you ever have follow-up questions uh, on any of the stuff we report on and talk about, feel free to hit us up. We will deploy our answers to those as best we can on our social media channels. So thank you for paying attention to us here. Yes, absolutely. You can, uh, of course, communicate us with us through the Government Accountability website. You can go to thedrilldown.com, which is the website for this podcast. And you can find this podcast wherever fine podcasts are located. Thanks again for listening. Until next time.